I think I could preach after that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. Well, today I get to preach on one of my very favorite stories from the Bible. I love the story of Jesus walking on the water. And not as much for the miracle of it as for the very real, very human character of Peter who gets up out of that boat. Amen? There are so many lessons that we can learn as a church and as individuals. So let's see what God has in store for us this morning as we listen for Jesus to say to us, come on, get out of the boat. Amen? Amen. So let's take a look at this story of Simon Peter and this story of walking on the water. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you that your spirit is here, that your spirit has come on down to move among us, to change our hearts and our minds today. Because we've come today, God, to learn to be just a little bit more like you. So God, right now, as we open up the word and as we prepare our hearts to hear from you, God, make us open vessels. God, right now I ask that you would touch me and anoint me, that your people might hear your word and only your word. Move me aside and touch me that I might speak your word boldly and with great love and compassion. Bless us now as we receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As I prepared this week's sermon, I came across a story that I just could not pass up. I had to share it with you. It seems that there was a congregation who had been without a pastor for some time. And they finally had decided on a pastor and they were going to call their first female pastor. Immediately, they ran into concern from two elders who happened to be the two who were dead set against having a woman in the pulpit. Now, it seems that these two elders had a tradition of an annual fishing trip. And they liked to take their pastor along with them. So what should they do now? Invite her? Well, they decided they'd invite her with the hopes that she wouldn't accept but to their dismay, she did. And that fateful day arrived, and they hopped in that boat, and they headed out on the lake, and they'd gotten probably about close to the middle of the lake when they realized they'd forgotten the bait. So the new pastor jumped up. She says, oh, I'll go get it. And she jumps over the side, and she walks across the water to the shore. The one elder looked around at the other. He said, I told you calling a woman was not a good idea. She can't even swim. <laughs> And the moral of this story is, even if you can walk on water, somebody's going to find fault with something. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. In this morning's gospel reading, Jesus had gone to spend some time alone in prayer. He had just received the news that John the Baptist had died, had been killed. And he had just preached to and fed the multitude, the 5,000. So he needed some time alone to recoup and to pray. So he sent the disciples on ahead of him by themselves. And as they were crossing the sea, they ran into one of those sudden squalls that are notorious on the Sea of Galilee. And the text says that the boat was being battered by the waves. And they were rowing for all they were worth, but they weren't getting anywhere. The wind was just too hard pressing against them. And then we read in the scripture, it says, During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them. Now we have to understand that the fourth watch of the night is roughly about 3 a.m. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. It's the darkest time of the night. And if you've ever had a sleepless night because of worry or anxiety, or if you've had a dark night of the soul, you know that about 3 a.m., is when you're your most tired, worn out, and exhausted. And I don't know about you, but for me, 3 o'clock in the morning faith ain't always the hardest to come by. It is the hardest to come by. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, you need to let me sleep. <laughs> I love you, Lord, but you need to let me sleep. But it's during the darkest hour that Jesus came to them. Jesus had seen their struggle from the mountaintop. And he had come to them walking on the sea. Now when the disciples saw this figure approaching them in the storm, they were terrified. 
And they cried out, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. Adding to their fear of drowning is the panic of the presence of a poltergeist. But Jesus spoke to them and said, take courage. It's I. So don't be afraid. And then we get to my favorite part of the story. Good old Peter. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you and I'll get out of this boat and walk on the water. Now I can promise you this morning those would not have been my words. <laughs> okay? I would have been like the rest of the disciples. See, the rest of them were sitting there white-knuckled as they were holding on to the boat. The storm and the waves and the dark and the wind and the uncertainty, they weren't about to move. Like most of us, they were quite content and happy in their little comfort zone waiting for Peter to get out of the boat. Amen? That's why I love Simon Peter. Peter is the one who always leaps before he looks. Peter's the one who speaks up. He's often loud and brash. And he's usually the one who has swallowed his foot down to the ankle before he even realizes he's got his foot in his mouth. <laughs> I can relate to this guy, okay? And if we're honest, most of us can. <laughs> Amen? Even if the gospel account had not identified him, we'd have probably figured out who of the twelve had gotten out of the boat. After all, Peter was always the impetuous one. And while, yes, he often made a fool of himself, no one can ever doubt the depth of his commitment and his love for Jesus. Amen? When it comes right down to it, Peter had incredible faith. Of the twelve in the boat, he was the only one who had enough confidence in the Lord to think that simply at Jesus' say so, that he could walk on the water. Amen? That's walking on water faith. Which takes me to my first point this morning. In the midst of the storm, Jesus invites us to get out of the boat. Amen? In the midst of the storm, Jesus invites us to get out of the boat. Notice that Jesus didn't calm the storm from the top of the mountain. He didn't even calm the storm from the seashore. Jesus went out on the water and approached them in the storm as it was raging. And in the midst of that, he told Peter to come. Come to me and walk on the water. In other words, in the middle of your circumstances, Jesus invites you to step out of your comfort zone and walk by faith. Amen? And that's not easy. I can tell you as a preacher, that is not easy. It's tough. But Jesus knew that Peter could do it. And Jesus knows that we can do it too when we trust in him. Amen? Let's take a look at that word circumstance. It's one that's filled with meaning for our lives. The word circum means around and stance means to stand. Circumstances which stand around us. They're always around us. In all of our living, we are always in the presence of some kind of circumstance. Amen? Sometimes pleasant and easy and agreeable. Sometimes not so much. Amen? We often hear the phrase, under the circumstances. And this frequently precedes some sort of excuse for doing, not doing something that we knew we really should have done. Amen? But circumstances are always there. But the question for us this morning is, are we under them? Or are we on top of them? Do they engulf us? Do they drive us to despair? Do they imprison and shackle us and enslave us? Or do we choose to rise above them and walk on the water? Amen? That's the question for us to consider this morning. We can't usually change them. Most of the time we don't create them. But we can refuse to be overcome by them. See, that's what Peter did. That's exactly what Peter did. He chose to see beyond his circumstances and to walk above his circumstances by getting out of the boat and focusing on Jesus, the source of his strength and his power. And by doing so, he was able to do the impossible. He was able to